Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about geniuses. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick. Well, it well it actually was. So hi Frederick. So basically, what you're saying is that you have to be a genius or quit. I'll have to give you some context here. This was posted on a video that I made, which was called "Why doesn't copy pasting IT strategy work out?" And in that video, I basically claim that the issue is that uh, what usually happens in society is that someone who is really, really smart comes up with a cool idea or a really good concept or something like that. And then other people get inspired by that and they are of less minds or like not as informed or not as talented. And then they try to copy that thing and they usually do it poorly. Uh, sometimes you know they can copy it and make it something even better, but you try to imitate it basically. But that doesn't necessarily know, mean that you know how to do that well and if you do it incorrectly you're simply going to copy paste something that doesn't really apply to your specific situation and my argument is that that is inevitable that is how it will work forever and ever and ever and the simple reason being because the time and effort it takes to innovate and create something that is that great. Imagine like being a scientist or something like that. If you think about say our basic education, it's based on the principle in essence that someone who is like everybody loves math, right? All those formulas, all that knowledge that you sort of have to drudge through in your algebra class or whatever you took in high school or so forth. Someone sat down once upon a time when this information was not given and came up with it and that person is most likely more smarter than the vast majority of the people who have ever lived the, because the effort to create that thing was enormous but consuming it secondhand or memorizing the formula that's sort of the level that most of us are like you just remember the abstraction or the thing but you could never really create it yourself and the same thing goes for a lot of these like you know, when you have uh, very successful companies, very successful athletes or authors or so forth and so forth, people of true talent or geniuses, they have an aptitude for something. They put a lot of effort usually into what they're creating and they're very gifted. They create something successful that becomes popular. Well, well that's usually when they copy and start and then people start copying it. And that what I'm talking about is that that is the way that it's always worked and it's probably always going to work that way. But the thing that makes the difference between whether or not the copying of somebody else's ideas is going to turn out well for you or not is the thing that I'm talking about. That's the thing. You don't have to be a genius, but you have to understand the difference between what's going to work for somebody else and what's going to work out for you. And that is not something that is a given for quite a lot of people. And that is basically what I argue. My argument is that it's if I'm, I wouldn't go as far as to say that there's a it's, there's a question of genius or not here. Maybe it is. I don't really know. I've never I've never really thought about it that way. But what I'm saying is that you are going to find that when you work in a code base or in a company or something like that with people who are semi intelligent, like they have tons of ideas about buzzwords or they have tons of ideas of like you know, how to do things or opinions on how processes or coding libraries or things like that and they don't really know how to do things things are going to turn out really shittily and if you, t if you think about it I think that you will find that that uh, is actually very very common it's very common that you go to practically every single IT at least every single IT company, company I've ever been to it's more common that you find quite a lot of issues with the code, quite a lot of issues with the architecture or the way like processes or like how well you may you like work or how well your uh, work processes work, etc., etc. Because most people, are, it's beyond most people to actually structure their own environment in such a way that it works really well for their environment all they're really capable of as i said with the math i'm not capable of coming up with my own formula per se but i can memorize one that somebody else told me about and then if i'm lucky i will know when to apply it but i'm still doing it at a fraction of the understanding of the pe person who came up with it therefore my application of this thing will be very limited and in order for me to bridge that problem i have to change as a person 
And I don't have to be a genius to do this because it's the same thing for everybody. The only difference between you and a genius or me and a genius would be how far do I get by basically applying the same methodology. And that is very simply, if you want to be a Steve Jobs, you want to be a Be Bezos, or you want to be any of these sorts of people, you have to understand that in getting inspiration from somebody else and then going through the hard work of understanding the problem that you are trying to solve and all the factors that make up that problem so that you can apply your own creative thinking to your situation and come up with a solution to your problem is always going to be a better choice because you, it requires it requires cognitive effort to create a solution that works really really well and since the world is a very complicated and diverse place it's very unlikely that you will find a copy paste solution to any given problem so when you have someone who is like a scrum master for this is one of my favorites i have met more scrum masters who basically don't provide any value to the team whatsoever they apply scrum but they can't actually in any meaningful way show a improvement in quality of delivery in delivery speed in anything basically it's, it's they are measuring something but for what reason nothing has actually changed apart from the measurement and no changes are made based on it same thing goes for people who talk about different libraries or coding standards and things like that where it turns out that after a few months this wasn't as cool anymore and now it's basically an orphan project is that genius application of something? Is that truly understanding the problem that you are solving? And now you have all this legacy and like problems that you have to live with because you're simp as I said, you apply something, but you don't actually have either follow through and you don't have the understanding of how to structure it so that it actually lives beyond whatever interest you might have in the project. How many managers do you have who can't, you know, s write a story card to save their life? because and like it doesn't matter how many times you talk to them and like you can re-groom or like reiterate on story specifications over and over and over and we still don't know exactly what to do with things you come into endless meetings how many managers do you talk to who have for example like they talk about having having to have dedicated non-meeting days and even though they're supposed to keep meetings to a minimum they realize that actually you know what I can't find a way to not have all these meetings because we have all these dependencies and I have to talk to all these people and I don't know all the things that I need to know so I have to pull in all the developers even though I'm not supposed to bother them I have to because I don't know these are the things I'm talking about so all these practices talking about the work processes and like talking about frameworks and, and talking about tooling and so forth the it, it's always down into in the application of what you're doing like the execution is the thing that is important but most people fail to understand how to effectively execute on the ideas that somebody else has come up with you don't have to be a genius to understand that I argue what you do have to be a genius uh, in order to do is to figure out um, how to solve your problem in the most efficient way possible and the smarter you are or the better you are the more efficient your solutions are going to be but it's still the same thing it's exactly the same thing it's creative thinking applied to a problem that you truly want to solve and that you truly understand these two things are necessary in order for you to make any meaningful headway or to actually go circumvent all these sorts of issues that you find with people who, as I said, don't really know how to solve things. They're basically just copy-pasting the ideas and doctrine of somebody else without ever actually doing any of their own thinking. So what I want you to take away from this is that no, you don't have to be a genius to get a working IT strategy or something like that. I'm simply saying to you that you have to be problem oriented. You have to understand what you're trying to achieve and you have to ask yourself, do I know how to do this? And when, if you tell me that you do, then prove it to me. Go and try it out with your own thoughts, your own ideas, and be very harsh on yourself and say, these results that I want, I am seeing those results this is objectively going exactly as I predicted or this is objectively becoming the thing that I want it to be. Great! You are clearly someone who knows how to solve this problem. The vast majority of people don't really know how to do that. 
because when something when they hit a wall and I've seen this happen so many times guys I've seen product managers who can't ship anything and I ask them do you realize like, have you figured out why it is that you can never actually ship anything due to all of these dependencies they don't really know how to solve their own problem I have software developers and I work with tons of them where I ask them how do we solve these quality issues and they don't really know like yeah I don't know how we should fix it and there's not a single unit test in the code base I talk to QAs to talk about that we need to increase the quality of uh, like their so the software we, we are writing and I go cool are you writing any end to end, -to -end tests or like how are you applying what solutions are you applying to fix this problem they don't know because they just know that there's a problem they, they have no idea how to solve it because what nobody told you how to solve it that's your da damn job as an engineer go and figure it out that's the thing I'm talking about and the people who do actually go and figure it out and do that better than anybody else they usually go on the tech talks later and tell the world about the ideas and the thoughts that they had and if they are really really lucky people think that that's a really cool idea and the whole cycle starts over again and people try to copy that thing and it's fine as I said to take inspiration and copy what the other people are doing but the difference between efficient execution on what you the ideas that you take from somebody else and basically just making a mess and then just being back to well in many, many cases in a worse situation is do you actually tr have the capacity to figure out how to solve this problem and if you don't you need practice trial and error experimentation and a whole lot of elbow grease because it takes time to become a genius of any topic have a great day